Hey guys, and so this is going to be my second, and I think I'm just going to quit uh, talking about Old Curiosity Shop after this one. I want to talk about the death of Little Nell, which is the most <laughs> famous thing about this book. Um, Oscar Wilde is known to have said something like, you have to have a heart of stone not to laugh at the death of Little Nell. Um, I'm actually going to talk about the, the scene and then get back to death and Dickens. Um, you don't actually see Nell die. What happens is there's a variety of characters who are trying to find Nell and her grandfather. And um, so they find out where they are. Oh, she's sick and they know they're sick and they're going to rush. And Kit has her favorite bird and birdcage that she had left behind that he's been taking care of all of these months that they've been gone. Um, and there's foreboding and this, that, and the other. And when they get there, uh, Nell's in the bed and the grandfather is sitting there and he's moaning and, and it just goes on and on. She's been dead for hours, hours, <laughs> maybe more than a day when they show up, okay? Now, it wasn't that unusual at the time, of course, uh, that you would have the body laid out. You know, you didn't necessarily have embalming. It would all be from your house. Uh, there were coffin doors, coffin windows, if you had a second story, if I remember correctly. I think we found one in our own house because this is an old house we live in. Um, so, yeah, the death of Little Nell. Supposedly, um, when the series was coming out and it was getting published weekly, okay, so you had a few chapters every week. And, of course, in America, we had to wait until it got shipped over. And I believe this is, you know, pre-transatlantic telegraph. So it's only the fastest ship that came over. And supposedly, like, the ships are coming into the New York Harbor. And they're, they're out with the, the tugboat or, well, not tugboat, but whatever, the harbor boat's coming out. And, oh, oh, did she die? And, oh, yeah, she died. And, and oh, panic. I mean, that might be a little overstating it but evidently old curiosity shop and little nell specifically was a huge hit in the united states and i've done and i'll link to one of my prior um, posts if you think about it child mortality was super high now uh, little nell herself is like 12 or 13 years old in the story and child mortality is generally under age five but if i remember correctly in the early 1800s about 50 percent of kids didn't make it uh, past age five. Um, it was very high. It's mostly infectious diseases, but also failure to thrive and, and all sorts of issues that you can have in an agricultural economy. Um, what killed Little Nell other than narrative uh, necessity? Um, you know, probably could be some fever, could be tuberculosis, though we didn't get any coughing or any indication of that. But the, the thing is, she and her grandfather lived in some severe want before they came to their final resting place, literally, um, and got good treatment and good food. Uh, she would have been worn out um, and, uh, you know, just a typhoid fever or something could have carried her off easily. Uh, it doesn't matter exactly what killed her. What's interesting, though, is as they go along the way, and there's more than one child death in this novel. There is the little scholar, um, the single gentleman who is the the bachelor teacher, sorry, has a little boy who was his favorite pupil who wastes away and dies. Um, again, I'm not quite sure of what. Uh, the mother accuses the teacher of basically making her son study to death, but that's not what killed the kid. This is probably some, some disease. Uh, a lot of kids died of diphtheria. That was a big one. People forget about that. Um, so a lot of child deaths. Um, an interesting aspect of the book, though, as she's wandering around the countryside with her grandfather, you see uh, effects of it's not merely an agricultural society. Um, of course, Britain was the first to industrialize of all the nations in the world. And she comes across, I guess it's probably Birmingham or, you know, um, one of the northern industrial towns. And there's a bunch of people who are starving, dying of starvation themselves because the factory closed down. Um, evidently, there was a lot of boom and bust in the early industrial age. They weren't quite sure. Um, it, anyway, it, it, it was pretty harsh. And then you had people who 
you're no longer living on the land or in farms. Um, and there had been a population explosion, of course, as well, due to uh, increased prosperity due to industrialization, but it also had a really bad effect on urban poor um, versus agricultural poor, where you know you can at least glean in the fields, I suppose. And not that that was much better. But we'll see a lot of child, well, a lot of deaths, but a lot of child deaths in Dickens. Um, usually, I'm just sitting here thinking, I don't think any kids were murdered. Um, it's all adults who get murdered, and uh, one kid gets close to being murdered, but he survives. Um, in any case, I'll talk about him uh, another time. Uh, but Dickens was brutal <laughs> with the kids, and it makes sense. Even in England, which was uh, far more advanced than America at the time, had high child mortality. This was reality. Everyone had to deal with that. Um, so uh, I, I, I'll I'll I think I'll see if I can find some of the academic studies of trying to estimate what child mortality was in Dickens novels, but I think it's probably representative of what you had going on in the society at the time. Uh, it was very common, and also other characters who just dropped dead of disease. Um, he also has plenty of characters who dropped dead of murder, um, and also accidental deaths. Uh, we'll see that later. Um, with hard times and some of the other industrial accidents. Um, so that's kind of interesting, too. Uh, death is a huge theme in Dickens, um, and Little Nell's death is basically the only thing anybody remembers about the old curiosity shop, and her death really isn't that interesting. You don't get to see it. Um, it you know, as I said, I read this novel, I don't love it, uh, but I read it because I love Dickens. The only one I refuse to read is Oliver Twist. Uh, this is definitely low down with regards to favorability of all the novels for me. Um, maybe Hard Times is lower than that. Uh, and then Burnaby Rudge is not a favorite either. But I'll be getting to those in future months. So, late hot.